On this week's episode, the final episode of this trip with Michael Shanebloom, we are still in the stunning Copper Coast. And on this episode, we're going to see the water beat me back from an incoming tide. Not once, not twice, not three times, but many, many times. And even in the mix of all of this, the true Californian decided to go barefoot. Come join us and see. It's not that big of a deal. It's photography. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be chill. Zen out. Plus we have now, we have four hours until sunset. <laughs> he may say we have four hours to sunset, but the sun is going behind clouds, so we may only have 30 minutes. So yeah. Come on, let's go. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the stunning area of the Copper Coast. Now, the tide has come in since I was last shooting my intimate seascapes with Michael, and now we are here for potentially sunset. We don't know yet, I mean, it is three hours until uh, sunset, but with the tide that's coming in, we said we'd give it a go and see if we get some diffused light. Now, shooting seascapes here and with this light it can be a challenge because the harsh light doesn't give you much to play with i'm just keeping an eye here by the way on the waves as they're coming in because the tide is coming in now also on that note with the tide coming in it is going to go quite high on the beach so there is a chance that if we decide to leave we may not be able to leave in time because we will probably be closed off from the exit point as you can see it's coming almost right up to me they were maybe an hour and 15 minutes away from high tide i would say but what we're going to do here is we're going to go shoot these stunning stacks and i've come here a number of times to be able to get some really really nice shots but i'm hopeful as well now today that not only will i get some nice shots but i hope that michael will also get some nice shots so yeah that's what we're going to do we're going to shoot sunset seascapes with shane bloom Whee. Whee, uh. Now, since we've been here since yesterday and today, this is the first time I've seen Michael get out his tripod. So it must be something of attraction that he's getting his tripod out. Where we are is over on the far right hand side of the beach, which reveals these stacks. Now, these are where I would have gotten my shots from earlier today. But as you can see now that the water's coming in, it has completely changed the uh, landscape. Now, what I'm hopeful to be able to do here is Utilize skill sets I'd normally have from a seascape point of view is with the play with that shutter speed. And playing with the shutter speed, you can get completely different effects within the water. But it's for the water coming in or also as it meanders back out that I'm hopeful I get a nice shot on. Want to compose the shot as well here using these sea stacks to be able to find some separation in between them. Actually, where Michael is standing is this place I'm almost exactly where I would have gotten a shot from around four years ago and I ended up getting the tripod right down low close to the uh, the water as it rushes through here and you get a nice view of all of those sea stacks. In actual fact I'll give you a look at that image now uh, and then I'll get set up and find my own composition also.
Now, a good thing to always do uh, before you even lock yourself into the shot is go hand held. And by going hand held, as I try and save Michael's tripod, um, by going hand held, you can fine tune your uh, position. Now, I think potentially for me to get the most out of the shot, I want to go down low because I want to make sure that these stacks are as big as they can be in the screen. It also gets me closer to the action. If I was to come along and just rock up, put my tripod here, I will be stuck at that height. So by varying that, and I know this landscape anyways, it is getting down low on this allows you to be more immersive in the image. And when you're viewing the image, it looks like you're going to get wet. Don't worry, I'll probably get wet for you, but hopefully I'll get that shot anyway. So yeah, now, as I've saved uh, Michael's very, very, very cheap Sony camera, uh, he's coming back over now to be able to immerse himself in the water. So he's a Californian. He seems to think that the water here in Ireland can't be any way colder than it is in California. But now we're going to find out. So yeah, barefoot and let's see how long he can last in this water. You got it? Yeah. It did move. Yeah, a little bit. That was a... Now I've taken a couple of different types of shots here. I started off at a quarter of a second and they were okay. I was slightly over to the right hand side here. Um, and those shots, what I was missing was separation because I gave Michael the opportunity to find his composition first. And you've got a stack that's in the far distance here and it was being cut off by the main stack in front of me. Now I've come over a bit left and what that allows me to do is to have each of the stacks in separation. There's nothing crossing over each other. And because I'm not as extremely low, but relatively low, it allows me then to be able to uh, get into the action. I've changed my settings now with my six stop to a half a second, and that's giving me some really nice texture in the water as it comes through. Funnily enough, even though the sun is shining right now, the stacks are lit and the area below me is dark, but I think that actually is working because it's allowing them a bit more light and a bit more contrast also within the scene. Now, some of these waves that are coming in here are quite big, so I have to be super careful that, you know, I don't get knocked over or the tripod doesn't get knocked over or that Michael in his bare feet doesn't get knocked over either. I'm sure he'll be fine. He's a hardy Californian. He's well used to all of this. But still, at the same point, you always have to have your wits about you. I'll give you a look at these shots that I have anyway here now. We'll see what the waves are going to do. They are obviously going to push us back to where I'm probably even sitting right now, but that's still going to change the shots as we go.
we are being moved back in, like I would have said here by the incoming tide. But I've moved over here to the left hand side and as you can see the water is coming in around here and it's also coming in from that side and it's kind of meeting in the middle. Now with this composition I'm hopeful that these rocks here in the foreground will have enough interest as the water comes in just like right now and flows in around them. It hasn't reached it just yet but it's going to that's for sure. Now in regards to the stacks as well I have a stack here on the left hand side similar actually to where you're framed the other stack now is actually going to be in um, parallel with the main stack in the background and then I'm just making sure that on the right hand side here that I've got the last of the stacks. Now with that as well in mind you know my settings are at a third of a second uh, and that's allowing me as well just to keep some texture within the water. I'm low enough but I might actually even get lower again to make it feel more immersive in relation to it. We still have got the uh, light behind me here which is lighting up the um, the stacks but not the foreground so with the white as it comes through here and fills this scene I do think it'll be a nice shot. I am at f11 as well at the moment so that's given me a good enough depth of field to make sure that I get everything in focus but where the water now is coming in here and once it reaches this I think it's going to be a nice shot so I'm going to wait for it but you can see the shot right now. I've moved over further and I've got into portrait orientation here just to get these stacks in front of me and what attracted me to this is I still have some residual light which is glowing off the rocks here below me. Now way I've positioned the stacks as well it's quite difficult to do but I'm trying to get as much separation as possible from this one point with these rocks because I really like the colors that are there. Now similar I'm waiting for a wave to come in and I don't have to wait long because the waves are coming in with high tide and I'm going to expose the shot just as the water will break here in front of me and now I have my camera set on high speed continuous as well and it's going to take a multitude of shots and then all I have to do is pick the one that I like the most the one that has the most motion the most texture and now because with the light as well like shows off the colors that are within these rocks there are some really really nice textures within that a wave just like this which got the front of my camera so now I'm going to have to give it a quick clean but yeah this is what I'm looking for. This is why I love seascapes so much.
<laughs> now for the next shot, you might have seen here that I was beaten back a couple of times by the waves because I had to get in, try and compose the shot before these large waves would come in and swamp me. But what I spotted basically was one rock that kind of stood out from everything else. There's more of a whiteness to it, but there's also a copper color on the top. And when a wave comes in here, just like this one, and it rushes around it, it comes up past, and then it also retreats back out. And the retreating water gives you a beautiful streak in the image. Now, I've composed it here to get three stacks in the uh, upper part of the frame. And then in the bottom here, I had uh, just this blank area of sand, but it didn't matter because that was being filled by water. I changed my exposure time as well to um, a third of a second. And that allowed me as well just to be able to have a bit more texture because the water was going to be really, really close to me. I focused one third into the scene and that on a quick fire just kept taking the shots. Kind of came up over my boots, but I'm okay. Uh, allowed me then to be able to have a multitude of different types of shots. Where we were a moment ago, we're lucky we moved back this way because we wouldn't be able to get back now without obviously getting wet. But yeah, I'll give you a look at this shot now. And then I'm going to move over here and I'm going to go for some streaks of the water looking over towards these three sea stacks. My next shot here what I'm trying to do is to wait for a wave just like this to come in and come up by my feet and then come back out now I am going to get wet I know that but I'm waiting for just like this when you get the water as it rushes back out here and at a third of a second you keep all that detail now I'm taking shot after shot after shot and I know that I'm able to get one at least anyway out of it but it's kind of running a gauntlet here against the waves because they're coming in up over my feet as you can see right now but it's going to be worth it because when this washes back out and it comes around this rock that i have here with these stacks as well i think it will be really really nice so yeah i'll give you a look at the next kind of quick fire shot anyway really in a moment i'm going to go back over the beach now while i can
So we were kind of beaten back by the uh, high, high tide in the last location and the light as well went behind some dark clouds making it extremely moody. So we've come to a completely different location here now as well in the hope that we can get some nice shots. And what I have in front of me here are a sequence of a number of stacks. And when I compose the shot, again, using the whole idea of creating separation within each of the stacks, I think it's a nice shot. Now, the sky is quite dark, but the waves are quite strong. So what I've done here is waited for a wave to come in and as it breaks and crashes below each of these stacks. Now, I do think that we are probably gonna get rain down here because I can feel some raindrops coming through. So it might actually be uh, another retreat from the rain, but we'll see, it might come past us. But I'll give you a look at these uh, shots from here and here because it is a stunning location. It would be great if I had some nice light, but I don't have any light. So it seems that I am not going to get any great light to finish off this trip for Michael, but we got to shoot some seascapes. What was your thoughts? Pretty nice. Uh, we got a little clearing in the in the weather and, and the tides worked out, so we got kind of lucky there, but no sunset, unfortunately. Yeah, no sunset, but nonetheless, still some good shots and still good to shoot some seascapes with shame bloom this now comes to the end of michael's trip to ireland it's been absolutely fantastic to host him here we've got some phenomenal conditions down in dingle and i think you got some banger shots i think so yeah really. i think so yeah. too yeah <laughs> uh, if you haven't subscribed to michael's channel of course smash that subscribe button go see some of the unbelievable content that this guy is producing i mean i've joked all week that all michael has to do is think and he gets a banger of a shot so yeah go have a look at his incredible uh, portfolio so thank you very much as always for joining i hope you've enjoyed this episode and if it's your first time on the channel please hit the subscribe button give me a like give me a comment and if you want to watch another episode i'd recommend this episode here and until the next time schlange